Hey, what's up, garden friends? Look at, see where I am? You see that? I just flipped the camera around. Garden center's open. Finally, all these months, those gates have been shut. Got plants and think, well, I don't know what's in there. I see some pansies. Let's go have a look. I know that there's an angle nobody ever wants to see ever from anyone. Uh, why am I here? I'm here to get a bird feeder for my little sister. I figure I may as well look at the plants and she has some planters where I could maybe do some spring stuff for her. Spring, finally, yes. Okay, hold on, did I put the car in park? I got so excited, there we go, all right. I was so excited to get in there, I wasn't even paying attention. Let's go see some plants. Oh, oh flowers, bringing me life. There's some pretty assorted pansies here. Huh, well, I can see why. Got some pre-planted bulbs. That's nice for those of us who didn't get them planted in the fall. <sighs> some pretty sanities. Ooh. All right, those look kind of pinkish red through the camera, but they're actually purple. <sighs> Ranunculus. Some nice spring shrubbery. You could do some nice bonsais with some of these. It's an interesting primula. Does it have a name? What's your name? Bellerina Nectarine Primrose. Very pretty. Violas, what's your name? 848, I don't know about that for a viola. Here's another one, Northern Lights. 848, why? What's making these so special? I don't get it, they just, they just look like pansies and violas. Why are they so expensive? Some Dianthus, double flowered and single flowered. Very pretty orange. It's a lot of orange. Now you see that much orange in the springtime. It's beautiful hellebores. Aren't they lovely? Just a little sea of fun winter spring flowers. Um, look at how stinking pretty. Aren't those just beautiful flowers? It's really deep red. Those are fun. Hey, those are some nice looking weeping pussy willows. Very, very, very full. And they have a nice uh, what's it? Not girth. Caliper. <laughs> nice caliper on the trunks. Very pretty. Dark leaf rhododendrons over here too. The elite rhododendron, if you were wondering. Looks like they're going to have a nice darkish purple flower. The tag has a light pink, but the buds look dark. I don't know. I have no idea. They're pretty. Lots and lots and lots of trailing snapdragons. They can take the cold, but I don't know about as much cold as we're going to be having right now. That's not a bad price. A lot of snapdragons in those. It's a fun color. It's like a bubblegum pink and there's some yellow in there. I like this one. It's a good blend of colors. I'm not getting it. I just thought I'd put it in the cart and walk around with it for a while and just hang out and get to know each other. And then part ways. This is more my speed. 398. Yeah. Well, 11. This one says, uh, what? Okay. 378. There we go. Yeah. That makes more sense to me. So we can get an 8-pack for 378 or a 12-pack for 12 I don't know. These are larger roots on them, but I don't I don't know if that justifies the difference or the colors better. Ooh, kind of. They're so stinking cute. I love a good pansy. With their cute little faces. They always look like they're smiling. Oscar Pink Dianthus. You know. I'm a sucker for Dianthus in the springtime, and then as soon as it warms up, I'm like, no, get out of here. Ooh, Louisias. Well, I'm even looking at Dianthus when we've got this gorgeous rainbow of Louisias over here. Wow. Love them. Some of my favorite rock garden plants, if not actually maybe my favorite rock garden plants. I don't have quite enough sun for them anymore. They stopped coming back a couple years ago. I don't think the light was there to break them out of dormancy, which is a shame because they're so pretty. I could probably find a spot somewhere in the front yard for them, but meh. I need to re-landscape that area. I need to think it out, plan it out, not just impulse buy, but they're so pretty. And do I even need to say anything? Such happy and cheerful colors. Really liking this one. That's a very pretty primrose. Here we go. Look at that. First trunk full of beautiful flowers. 2022. Ah, so pretty. Oh, nope, too much. Oh, that's kind of impressive, though. 
<laughs> Still learning the new vlog camera. My apologies. Also, hopefully the audio is okay. Been through it with the microphones lately. I think may have figured it out, but I won't know until I edit this portion of the video. Anyway, so I got these to put into a planter. And, uh, well, yeah, I'll just show you. Actually, there's nothing to show. We'll talk about it in just a minute. Here's their bird feeder. This thing's been hanging up over here for like a year or however long they've lived here. Less than that and never been a bird on it. So thought I'd get them a new one. Isn't it pretty? It's just a bird feeder. There's nothing special about it. I can't fill it up all the way though. I know I'm supposed to be talking about the plants. We'll get to that in just Prior owners of this house were really nifty people and did a lot of their own things. So I just assumed that when I was looking through, there's a window over here right there that when I look through that window when I'm in the house that that bird feeder was like hanging from something in the bricks but uh no that's I mean that's no absolutely not thinking oh I'll get him a nice great big huge bird feeder so all the animals can come and flock to it and the cats can enjoy watching it and have a great time at the nature channel I bet that's why the birds never use it it's probably too springy bouncing around up there in the gutter that's bad that's not how that's supposed to be so the that's why I didn't fill it up all the way. The weight feels about the same as the one I just took off of there. I have to find a better way to get that hung up. Anyways, got some annuals to put into these planters right here. I did these planters for them last year. It didn't make it into a video, but it will eventually <laughs> when I replant these. Uh, it's just really pretty, beautiful pots with, I believe, Pinky Winky standard hydrangeas in the tops. And they had Super Tunia Vista bubble gums and Super Tunia Vista silverberries down below. That is it, pretty simple. I just wanted to plant them up and do something nice for them. They're out of town right now. But the forecast just did a drastic change and we're supposed to get down to 16 degrees Friday night. The night before this video comes out. So that's not happening. All the fun little plants I just got are going to have to hang out in the garage for a little while. Don't remember Vinny? Oh, okay. He's a little boy. And Smudge. Hey, Smudge. Yeah, hi, sweetheart. You're such a sweetie. Such a sweetie. I love you, Smudge. Hi. Yes. Very cute. Okay. Cats are taken care of, bird feeders hung. Can't do the planters, it's going to be too cold, so just go back to the house, play with my animals, play with some plants. I think maybe if I concentrate these more underneath everything, that should radiate the heat upwards, I think. Ah, here's open. Get some tucked in. Under there, I believe it was 70 degrees. Just a couple days ago, it was 70 degrees. Now it's 26. Tonight, it's supposed to be 13. What the crap? Are those lights even on? Yes, some of them are. That's better than nothing. This frost blanket over here, that should help hold in some of the warmth. Oh, jeez. I tend to get frustrated with these little upsets, but it doesn't really matter because it's just one day. It's gonna be really cold for one day and then it's supposed to be in the 60s and 70s immediately afterwards. <laughs> Come on, Midwest. One last little spot to cover up. I think this should be good. Are we good? I think so. That should do the trick. Oh, actually, I think I could seal that up just a little bit better. There we go. Yeah, I think we're good now. <laughs> they should be warm enough. Got a little bit of snow, not too much. The sable miners, oof. They're looking rough. We had some cold nights this winter. Over here is where I'm the most disappointed. Look at all the beautiful daffodils that have been coming up over the last couple of weeks. I think they might be, I don't know. 13 degrees is pretty chilly. That's pretty cold, I suppose we'll find out. I'd use all my frost blankets for them, so. Yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. I think it will be, hi baby. Hello, how you doing, sweetie? How you doing? What was that? Oh, knocking things over. I think you should get a treat because I went outside? That's not how it works. All right, you wanna do some stretches? No, you don't do that. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, good boy. Pumpkin, Pumpkin, you wanna say hi? Oh, you get Pumpkin kisses, Turbo, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. I don't think she wants kisses right now, though. Turbo, no kitty. Yes, yeah, she said no. Leave her alone. No kitty. Not right now. I know. It's hard to gauge. Sometimes she's okay with it. Oh, do you see it? You see him? Hey, pretty bird. Hey, Cardinal. Pardon the TV in the background. That might be a little bit better. Such beautiful birds. They have a nest in that spruce tree that's 
in the background that's bored in the background behind him. Look at you chowing down, getting your breakfast on. That's your pretty birds, Turbo. You better stop. It's not about you right now, Turbo. It's about the beautiful Cardinal. Such beautiful birds with a beautiful song, too. Turbo is behind me, just freaking out right now. And he was outside maybe two minutes ago. He does not need to go out. <laughs> the bird just saw Turbo. <laughs> They're starting to get used to him. Sort of. <laughs> you see him watching him? Turbo, even the Cardinal's hand, shut up. He's trying to enjoy some breakfast. Be quiet. And just so you know, Turbo was not harassing the bird. He was looking at me, whining to go outdoors, and he's been outdoors so many times. You don't need to go out there. You don't know how I forgot, but I need to get the plants out of the car and you do it fast because I already took my pants off. Okay, finally. Settled in. Got the necessities done. We can relax a little bit. I've got a lot of stuff going on over here. Like, too much. What happened? Why is there so much going on? Last night I washed out and cleaned all these little pots over here, the like leftovers from Super Tunias and, you know, annual containers. And plants I got last year. Gave them a fairly good rinse. I didn't sanitize them or anything like that, but anyways, they were out here drying. You know, the heater's right up there, so this is a good spot to blow all the water off of them and get them dried up because my plan was to repot my artichokes. Basically time to get that done. So those are all dried out now, which is great. I can put these away. I do need to get those repotted here soon. I will show you what they look like here in just a moment. I'm not going to do it right now because I do not have enough potting soil, but that's not that big of a deal. Get more soil, be able to get these things taken care of here pretty soon. There we go. Well, I can put these away. They're nice and dry. They're not perfectly clean. I said I didn't do a bleach or like peroxide wash with them, anything like that. They sat outside in the sun for a good chunk of the year and then all the freezing temperatures and I didn't really have any bug issues so I figured it's probably fine to just do this. I've typically done in years past and it's never been a problem but if there were ever any issues with insects or disease then well I would sanitize them but you know they were just annuals so I don't have to worry about that. Sorry this is so gross. I just I didn't feel like cleaning it out, so there it is. Okay, do some squatting here. So the artichokes, they've done a good amount of growing, but the growing has stalled out. It's time to get these babies into some larger containers. See the roots on these, they're looking pretty good and healthy, and some of them are starting to come out of the bottom of this flat too. So that's how we know it's time to step them up, get them into a fresh mix. It has nutrients in it. Seed mix doesn't usually have much to it. There's not a lot going on inside of those blends. It's mostly just to get them started. So I will pick up some more potting soil next week when it's warmer out. I can hit up a nursery, grab some bags of a good mix that I think those will do well in. I'll probably just go to Spoma Potting Mix because that's been working well with the majority of my plants. The oregano? I don't think it's quite there yet. Just about. I really, I, those need a pinch. I need to give the oreganos a good pinch to thicken them out and get them more sturdy. They're not flimsy or anything, like you can touch them. They have a good bounce back to them, but uh, they just don't seem ready yet. Oh, that's a fun leaf that's about to open up there. Look at that. Not much is going to happen with it since it's mostly all white, but it looks neat. Cool looking pattern in there. Oh, and up here is where all those artichokes and the seedlings will go when I get them repot. That's why I set that up. It doesn't matter. You don't care. Talk about all that when it's actually time to repot them. The metanella, look at that. The inflorescence is opening up and looking absolutely beautiful. And there's another one right there that's popping out. And another one right there that's starting to do its thing. I should zoom out. I want to make people dizzy. Yeah, it's got three. One big one and two more opening up on it. I don't think this plant has stopped flowering since... Actually, I don't remember the last time this plant didn't have flowers on it. It's been very, very, very happy. Probably could use a repot, maybe. I don't know, it doesn't ever act like it really needs a repot, but just like looking at it, and I know it's been over a year, it should probably bump it up, but it never really, it doesn't wilt down. It has no issues rehydrating when I water it, but I just, you know, when it's been so long, you feel like you're supposed to do it, but the plant, I don't know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I'm sure it's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. So many other things that need to be done. The, the, I, I got more rocks. I had actually ordered these rocks before the ones at PetSmart went on sale where it was buy one, get one 50% off. So this amount of rocks right here cost 
fifteen dollars more than uh, all of those rocks that were on the table in that last video. And they sent some good ones. They're pretty. They'll get used. And you, Aquascape bonsai those things as pulled mouths have a look at them. I need to give them a rinse and get them dried off and put them away. I don't think I have time for that right now, though. They're very dusty. Very, very, very dusty rocks. And then all this mess over here from some of the plants that came in the mail. I just got those dropped into the tank. I haven't planted them quite yet. The place I ordered them from is just an eBay site that has really cheap aquatic plants, but they are uh, pond plants. They're grown outdoors. So I had to give them a little bit of a bleach bath just to help get some... This, is, this should not be this difficult. Here we go. Okay, I feel like that went on for too long. They had a bleach bath and then they sat in a tank with some circulating water that had an anti-parasitic medication in it for about two and a half to three days just in case there are any flatworms, anything on there that didn't want in the tank. So they're in here now but not planted up. Probably going to be a few more days until I actually get the plants in here planted up because I'm still waiting on the driftwood to finish releasing its tannins. It can take over a year sometimes to get all the tannins to leach out of driftwood. Usually a few weeks to a month does the trick especially with smaller pieces like the ones that I'm using. I just wanted to get like the bulk of it out and I can throw carbon over there in that filter and that will help release some of it as well. There isn't anything else really going on out here is the problem. That's why I was looking forward to doing some spring planters and doing some things outside. I'm about caught up out here. I do need to make some room on this table though. That's something I should prioritize. I need to pull some of these little plants off of here, get them onto the shelf, because I have this tree fern sitting here that might be dead. I don't know. And I want to move that over here onto this table because there's a good airflow over here. It's a very warm spot. It's closer to the light. So if it's going to have a chance to be woken up and spring back to life, this is the spot for that. And I think the calatheas and all the little plants in their self-watering containers should be fine on those grow lights, under the grow lights. I don't know for sure. But they get a pretty good amount of shade over here. Some light filters through, but not a ton. Those grow lights can be fairly intense. Oh, look at those leaves springing and bouncing all over the place because my hand's wobbly because I'm standing in a very odd, awkward position. If I put them towards the back on the shelf where the light's higher, that should be okay. I'm looking at the growth here on this fuchsia, and the lower growth is eh, it's still fairly dark. It's not as dark as the stuff up top, but that's still... Oh. oh, or I could keep them towards the front where they aren't directly under the light at all. That's probably a good way to do that. So there's some, say, like a little safe. Am I making any sense? I have no idea. Have a look at the yellow fusion. Ooh, looking nice. Does need some cleaning up down low where some of the older foliage is dying out, but it's putting out new growth up top. That's what I'm most concerned about with these. Where are my clippers? Not those, the other ones. The heck, I have no idea where my clippers went. That's very frustrating. These disappeared for about a week and a half and I was very upset because I really like these pruners. They're just, I think they were craftsmen. I got them at Home Depot, they were by the checkout and I haven't seen them for sale there since, but they feel nice in my hands. The clip on them is really easy to pull in and out and to release it, you just squeeze it and it pops open, which isn't really necessary, but it's nifty. And I like that about them. They do rust up, but not as anywhere near as fast as my Felcos do. The Felcos literally just hanging out here in the humidity. They didn't get any water on them, covered in rust, just from being around the humidity. These don't do that. They're dirty. And they could use a cleaning, but no rust. And pretty easy to sharpen, too. I think these were 18 to 22, somewhere in there. Uh, I found them this morning, and I was very excited. I've done pretty good at holding onto these. I lose clippers fairly often. I always find them, eventually. But these had for over a year and made sure to always put them back in the same spot. I accidentally left these in the car because I did some plant work for someone, helped them out with their house plants and forgot that they were in there. So that was super exciting and I know nobody cares, but I'm very happy. Oh, the whole point there was go figure. I find these that have been missing and then the ones that I've never lost just vanished. No, I'm sure they didn't vanish. I didn't actually look that hard for them. I can look a little bit harder. I'll find those and get that stuff cleaned up here. Uh, rattlesnake, how are you looking? Pretty good, kind of dusty. You dusty? You dusty. I haven't had to add water to these either. Not since the last time I talked about it in a video, which was I think two weeks ago. Those reservoirs have held onto that water nicely. I also put one of the silver 
lady tree ferns, silver tree ferns, into a self-watering container just because I figured, why not? I figured, why not give it a try and it seems to be enjoying it. It has a nice fiddlehead new leaf coming out there. And this container is just one that a house plant came in from Home Depot. I think it was a Sansevieria in a self-watering container. It's always the sense of, why are we putting those in self-watering containers? They don't need that. And then I added in the little wicking cords that come in the bottom of the Costa Farm plants from Lowe's. I always save those. If I buy a house plant and repot it, I hold onto those so I can just snap them into the bottom of something else. Which came in very nifty for this little fern here. Oh, uh, the Palea is a button fern. This plant has been a trooper never thrown a fit when it gets thirsty it just wilts down just a smidge give it a drink and it perks right back up and it can dry out considerably more than i would think that it would it doesn't that just look like a plant that would just throw an absolute fit if it didn't hold on to moisture for a long time but it's no that hasn't been the case where's the tag button fern folia rotundifolia very nice plant It'd be great in a terrarium even though it doesn't seem to fuss with it oh you know what though it's like, really humid out here. So forget everything I said. I don't know how this would do in the house because <laughs> it's certainly not 77 to 80% humidity inside of my home. So maybe this the, possibly not a relatable comparison. I don't know. Let me know. Comment down below. Let us know if you've been growing these in the house and not outside in a garage where it's very warm and very humid and let me know how it's been doing for you. I've grown button ferns in terrariums before and in open terrariums, not always closed ones, and they've usually been pretty sturdy plants. So maybe that's not just a thing of being out here in the warm, humid grow space. I just can't remember. It's been a few years. Really lovely plants though. Also needs a little bit of cleanup though. Got some dead ends to take care of there. This actually, putting myself on blast here, shouldn't do this. This fell behind a plant and disappeared for like a solid maybe three weeks and then I eventually saw it and like crawled inside the horde of plants back there and pulled it up off the ground but it looked fine had a little bit of die off but that was it sat in the dark for a few weeks and only got water from whatever just splashed around from the other plants when I was watering them that was a major oopsie I know bad I, those things don't really happen anymore that was from when things were really crammed tight together in here before the new heater got installed and now things are much more spread out and mostly evenly organized. I say that as there's a plant sitting inside of a plant, but it just seems happy there, so I don't see a reason to mess with it. They're both just doing fine. Tamra Croton, not much of a grower. This one's just kind of done the same thing for a pretty long time, but it's pretty. This one I think would actually really appreciate being on the shelf. There we go. I'm actually just going to pop that one in down here on the lower shelf. It fits in better down there. And what's left? This is the canary. F I keep wanting to call it a canary island fern. I don't, what is wrong with my brain right now? The canary wing begonia. Cut this back, repotted it late last summer, early fall. It's been flushing out some new growth. This would actually probably be much happier on the shelves, but I selfishly would prefer to keep it over here because I really I like the flowers on it. They're fun to look at. It's nice having flowers nearby when I'm sitting over here at the desk. I'm just going to move that out of the way for a moment. Maybe straighten that out. That's really wonky in there. Okay, last plant to move. This is the Nicholas for Nicholas Diamond Fern. It's that hybrid fern from the Hertz Hall. It's done some growing. Has some pretty cool looking fuzzy rhizomes coming out of the pot there. You can see it's about to offshoot. That beautiful frond ready to open up. Hasn't been fussy. Yeah, I think I have like intentionally watered this, meaning gone out of my way and given this plant a thorough drink one time. Otherwise, it's just gotten splash and quick waters from when I've been watering the bigger plants around it. It's been doing well. But supposedly, the reputation with this plant is that it's supposed to be a more sturdy fern with some hybrid vigor, and I was like, okay, we'll see about that. I'm not going to baby it. In fact, I'm probably going to go out of my way to slightly not neglect the plant, but I'm going to put it through the ringer and really test that out so I can report back and let y'all know. And so far, it really has been a trooper. It's actually really dry right now. I'm gonna get it on that shelf and give it a heavy drink. Yeah, just, I can put it, where am I gonna, I don't, wait, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, no worries. It fits, fits right in there, nice and snug. Give that a drink, oh, you can't see any of this. This is a useless shot. You have no idea what's happening. Apparently I'm just pouring water all over the ground. Get this off of here and be very careful with it. This stuff is like gold these days. Ever since the pandemic, 
been a lot harder to find this stuff in these nice big hefty sizes. I need to be careful with that and not spill it. In fact, I should probably put the camera down, pull the dead monster leaf with it. That's good. I needed to get that out of there. That worked out well. It was coming out from a spot that would have been really hard to get to with the clippers. So no, I don't need to. Yes, the monster lost a leaf. It's okay. The plant's been totally fine. This started dying off right around the time I brought it inside. I don't know what that's about, but it's put out new leaves since then, so not worried. Go. Didn't I say I was going to use two hands for that? I don't know. Worked out fine. That was a heavy plant to get moved up there. Oh, that's good. Look at how much light's coming down right there. I think that'll be a lot happier in this spot. Although, I don't know. It might be dead. I'm really not sure. It, so the temperatures only got down to, I think it was 31 when I moved it inside. And I know plenty of yell over there in the UK. It drops into the 20s and you have the tree ferns. So I don't, I don't know. It's done this before, though. But that was more of a shock from being moved inside and it would defoliate and then like a month later would rebound. This is, it's been like this since November. So that's a pretty long time. But I feel like if it's going to have a good shot at coming back, if it is still alive, this is probably the best spot for it. Cause it's warm, the light's really bright and intense and uh, well, all the other reasons that made sense in my head. Let's have to wait and see. And if not, not the end of the world. We had fun, but to be honest, I kind of hate this plant. Been nothing but a pain in my butt the whole time I've had it, which is more my fault. It's not the plant's fault, largely because I had it in a blend that just didn't hold on to enough moisture, so it was high maintenance. Last year it did really well though, so I pulled most of that bad mixture out that was draining too fast and added compost. Made it a nice nutrient-rich blend that held on to moisture for just a little bit longer. Not much, because I didn't unpop the entire thing, which is what I probably should have done is just completely unpot it but I was just doing that as an experiment so I didn't fully want to repot it because I wasn't positive if that was what the issue was but anyways it did respond well to that but clearly things have changed since then eh, we'll see I also just hate picking those things up I am covered well that's just my hairy arms I brush most of it off but these hairy ferns oh it itches does it make you itch the stuff from the tree ferns it feels like fiberglass on my skin. Can't stand it. Worth it, because they're so pretty, but not, I'm not into the itch. All right, canary wing begonia staying over here. I've been enjoying it. It's been happy in this spot. So, like I said with the other things that ain't broke, don't fix it. It seems happy. Putting out new growth, flowering. I would like to get it to develop some thicker roots, because I started to shift it, and I was like, eh, you can sort of see here. It's not in there as deep as I would hope it would be. <laughs> that was a weird way to say that. It hasn't rooted in as deeply as I would like to be messing with the roots. It got repotted in, what, late September? Maybe something like that. And then temperatures cooled off. So it's really only been back in active growth here for a few weeks. I'm just going to, it can just chill and relax. Just going to leave it alone. And I am only going to give this a light watering to start this off because it's supposed to be so cold tonight. The heater in here is fantastic. But when it's 13 outside, it's still going to struggle to keep things in the upper 70s to mid 70s. So I don't want this to be sopping water saturated, but a little drink. Probably give it two or three more of these. That should be fine. And then after today, it should be, not today, after tomorrow, it should be really toasty. It's going to be in the 60s and 70s next week. So the heater won't even be running that much in here. And maybe that warm up will do something for it. We'll find out. These are some neat looking rocks. Look how this one has this little channel in it. You can just like imagine a stream of water puddling over that and running through so neat. And this one, all kinds of great angles to it. This would be a good rock to put in a, like a nice big round shallow planter and put something on top of it that will root over it. It has all the angles and places for those roots to go and you still get to see the rock. Yeah. That's fun. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about rocks for like 10 or 15 minutes like I did that one time. Desk gets cleared off for the first time in a few days. I just kept doing one thing after another. It just kept getting piled up on. Give that a wipe down. Nice to just sit back and relax. That's pretty much all I have going on is what you just saw. Just moved a few plants around. I know, not the most exciting stuff ever. So hopefully the conversation was something to enjoy. Did you enjoy it? I hope so. Uh, I, my plans had been around being able to do things outdoors so I didn't really line any projects up in here specifically. Clearly, right? I didn't even have soil lined up to do the repots. 
for those artichokes, but that's okay. I moved the kangaroo paw ferns. I figured that's probably okay. They're microsorums, which can take a lot of moisture. I thought it might be too much splatter for them. And that one's partially submerged, which is fine. The water's warm enough and it's circulating, so there's oxygen in it, so that shouldn't hurt the fern. So if that one's okay, I don't think I need to worry about the splatter on this one. I think you seem pretty happy. Very lush and very pretty. I never talked about how this was crooked, did I? I don't think I mentioned that when I was talking about how I put this waterfall thing up here and the reason that the little water weirs wouldn't work anyways because this is slanted. Eh, we don't need to talk about it. It's fine. It's crooked. It's old. I just need to get a new shelf to put over there, but it's holding on nice and sturdy. I didn't see a reason to rush into that this year. Do a quick fish update. There actually isn't that much to update with them. Parameters are stable. There's some phosphate in there, but it's not terribly high and that's to be expected. There's an algae outbreak on the sand, but that's also to be expected with new sand in the tank. If my nitrates and phosphates were high, that's something I'd be concerned about, but they're not. So, so far, so good. I'm gonna keep rinsing out and changing that driftwood so hopefully I can get these plants put in place here in a few days. I think you got all the updates you need on the plants. Did the rearranging, we'll see how these do here. I think they should be okay, but I'm gonna keep an eye on them. My only concern would be light. Airflow over here is about the same as it is over there. Temperature is about the same. It's just a little bit cooler over here on this wall than it is over there, but not by much. Tonight, it's probably, maybe I should have waited until tomorrow to move these, because tonight that window's sort of drafty. Well, I'll crank the heater up, it'll be okay. Oh, the Hilo Beauty Caladium. That's done some more growing. It was kind of floppy last time y'all saw it. Another leaf coming out there, seems happy. Oh, and those begonias that got a big cut back and repot a few weeks ago. Look how full and flushed out those are. That is pretty much all that's going on over here. You saw the bird's nest for a repot, maybe, in the last video. Otherwise, things are just hanging out, growing, flowering. Seemingly happy. Are you happy? I hope so. Thanks for hanging out. Next week, hopefully, the <laughs> vlog will be a little bit more consistent and get some things done outdoors, or I'll have materials to get more things done inside. Sometimes it's fun to just do a few little plant things, and walk around and talk and see what's going on with them. Comment down below, say hi, love talking to everybody. Hopefully the audio is at least slightly more consistent in this video than in the last. I don't know what's going on with those microphones. I think it's probably just time to get some new ones. I tried out some new ones and that didn't really work out. As you saw in the last vlog, that audio was horrible. And then uh, Wednesday's video, tried another different mic, didn't work out because it apparently wasn't on. And then I got it turned on and still didn't like the audio. So I just decided, you know, for the vlog, I need to just decompress and get away from the high tech stuff. So I just used the vlog camera for this whole thing and hopefully it was better. If not, I'm so sorry. I know there's background noise, probably a good amount of it because I had to leave the fans on. Turn the heater off, but I can't turn, when it's this cool outside, I have to have the fans going to keep the hot air moving down and, you know, so the cold and the hot, you get it? It would get cold very quickly if I had all of the fans off. There's not a fussy crowd here, so probably not an issue. Again, hope you are doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as a, oh yeah, here's the Gloriosum update. Has a teeny tiny itty bitty little baby leaf that popped out there and another one that's getting ready to unfurl right there. As always, and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.